Hey dog sisters, it's Melissa Bergio, your vendor speaker manager, and I'm here today with Katrina Sawa. Hi Katrina. Hi Melissa. How are you today? I am awesome, doing amazing. Excellent. Well, we're here today to talk a little bit about um, having a vendor table at Celebration. Um, Katrina, you are an expert at um, hosting vendor tables at trade shows and events like ours at Celebration. Can you talk a little bit about why you think it's important to have a vendor table? Yeah, you know, I know there's a lot of uncertainty right now, um, but we've got to still keep taking strides forward in what we're going to do in our business. Mm -hmm. And I fully believe that we're going to be okay in October. I'm hoping like that we can all come together in person, or at least a lot of us who feel comfortable doing that. And a vendor table is um, mm -hmm. at any event, whether it's this event or other events, it's how to show up bigger. And so you can get more exposure in your business when you go to an event. There's three ways to show up at an event as an attendee, as a, an exhibitor, or as one of the speakers, right? Mm -hmm. Now, right. if you're not going to be one of the speakers, if, if I can't be one of the speakers at an event or conference, I surely want to show up as a vendor or an exhibitor because then I get more exposure. I'm really maximizing the ROI of my time being there. And if it's, especially if it's really cost effective, which your booths are very cost effective um, and are very affordable for what you get, um, it's, it could be a great way to really build your business. If you do some of the key things right and you know what to do before, during, and after the event to maximize your leads, your sales, and you know, the connections that you're gonna make in general. Mm -hmm. So you're being very generous this year and offering a toolkit for anyone that signs up to be a vendor. Do you want to give a little preview of what you're going to offer to our yeah. vendors this year? Yeah, it's one of the biggest things that I share with uh, some of my own clients is sometimes you just don't know what to bring, what to do on a table, what to put. People stress out about this big time. And so I don't want you guys to stress about that. I want you to know exactly what to bring, get a ton of ideas on what to put on your table, something simple, especially if you're traveling. I'm coming all the way from California, right? So I have to bring and lug my stuff. I don't just get to drive in. <laughs> and so you have to be careful on the amount of things you bring too. Sometimes like newer exhibitors, I will tell you, uh, I had somebody ask me this last year at celebration, like how many flyers should I bring? Um, because there's supposed to be 200 people. Do I bring 200 flyers? I'm like, Oh no, 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 no. You don't need to bring 200 flyers. You bring about 20% of how many people are supposed to be in the room. Trust me. Okay. I've done this. I've made all these mistakes where I brought like hundreds and hundreds of flyers. I pre-printed and brought boxes and boxes. And guess what? I either threw them in the trash so I didn't have to bring them back or I would lug them back. Same thing with books. Like if you have a book, I used to bring like 60, 70 books to a conference. I'm like, I'm not selling that many books, unfortunately, right? I might bring 10 or 20 and then yeah. I can always ship them. If someone wants to buy more books, I can always like say, oh, I ran out, but I'll ship it to you, right? So Absolutely. just yeah. be thinking about things like that. You don't have to bring a whole ton of inventory. You just mm -hmm. want a sampling, right? Exactly. And some big signage and things like that. And it's funny, I have a couple of uh, pictures. Uh, let me share my screen real quick. Sure. And, um, I'll show you a couple of pictures that I have. I pulled them out of my archives of me at another conference. Just to show you, you want your booth to stand out. So sometimes people bring little signs and little things to put on their table, but we can't see it from afar. You want to be able to see your booth and see what you've going on, big picture, from afar. So that could mean some table or, or some floor signs, right? And they're only a couple hundred bucks, and you want to make them so they're universal, like so you can use them all the time. Uh, let me just share a, like an example. So. Here's me, well, here's me at the booth, right? So here's one booth I did like last year. And I have these two signs, but look at the humongous font, right? Humongous font. Right. And I have a bunch of books and look how I have the different um, heights. So I have some things standing up higher. I have signage. I have even handwritten signs. It's okay to handwrite a sign. And this is what I do last minute with some people at their booths when I go around to um, 
when I'm at trade shows, I actually go around to the vendors usually and make little signs. And I did this last year at, at um, Celebration. If they didn't already have one, I say, go get a wine glass from the bar to make your, to put business cards in and then just handwrite with a Sharpie, a little sign in front. It's okay. Just, you got to collect leads, right? So I have right. these huge signs, but look at this picture because here's the showroom floor. And you can totally see my banners like from afar. Look at the other banners. You can't yeah. read what's on their banners for most of us, exactly. right? Mm -hmm. You can see my, my signs from across the room. So think about that when you're doing your signage, all right? So those are just a couple, you know, quick little ideas. Um, I do have my trade show toolkit. It's like an ebook, and there's a whole checklist of things to do and bring and it's, um, I have a checklist of what to bring. I have a checklist of things to negotiate. This is key when you're speaking, or whether it's paid or free, or if you're an exhibitor, there's a lot of things you can ask for that sometimes people don't think about asking for. Mm -hmm. um, there's other ways to make money and all kinds of stuff. So I wanna give that to you guys. Um, it's, it's, it'll just be a super easy checklist for you to, to grab, um, but think about, standing out in a big way um think about minimizing the stuff you're bringing and then thinking about how you're going to collect names and, and contact information mm -hmm. one big tip on that is please don't well you can ask for business cards but not everybody has them right not right. everybody most people do you want a drawing slip a lot of times i see these drawing clips with they're teeny like this big and it just has name email and maybe a phone number, right? Don't do that. Make a big drawing slip. Like mine are a half a sheet of paper. And it always has these little, and I don't have one to show you, but it's, it's in the toolkit. You'll get part of that. Um, you'll get that. Um, but full contact information. You need to start collecting uh, mailing addresses and definitely phone numbers, not just email these days. A lot of people don't have their mailing addresses on their business cards. So this is why I recommend having a drawing slip to enter your drawing with. And yeah, you wanna give something away, not a discount on your services, you wanna actually give something away. It could be a product, but keep in mind if you can't, like last year I gave away some books, I gave, I bought some baskets from one another dot and I gave away some physical baskets, but I was a little worried and I had to do my drawing earlier in the last day because I didn't want people to leave who were gonna win the drawing and then be stuck with a basket that I would have to mail. So be careful on what you're giving away. A lot of times I give away a digital something or other, like a like the ebook or something like that, or you can do a free consult um, of some sort. You're not going to get a gazillion people, unfortunately, signing up for your free consult. If your if your goal is to get people into conversations uh, in order to have them buy your products, programs, and services then give away free consults. Trust me, even if you have 100 people sign up in your drawing, you will probably only get about 10 people who follow through with that phone call, mm -hmm. unfortunately, okay? Mm -hmm. No matter how much follow-up you do, it's just, it is a numbers game and people are still resistant or they just get too busy or whatever. So, I don't know, those are some tips. <laughs> we got a lot more to share. Absolutely. And this is exclusive to vendors only. Um, that sign up to be vendors at celebration. You don't give this toolkit away as a rule. No, it's, it's, I usually charge 27 bucks for it. It's just a low price product that I have on my website. Um, and I'm going to throw in some extras too on your page, like some of my templates. So you're mm -hmm. going to get some flyer templates, some sign templates, some order form templates and the drawing slips templates. So <laughs> nobody gets that, but my, my clients. So right. Yeah, or people that come to events of mine. So yeah, it's um, just grab it. I mean, it'll do you good. And please sign up. Trust that you're meant to make a bigger splash. Trust that you know. You, I I do these all the time. Up until COVID, I did. I probably do table displays. I don't know, eight or ten times a year, not including the little gigs that I speak at, and I have a little table in the back of the room, right? And it really does produce a lot of potential prospects for me that I can then follow up with on the subsequent months after and, and get into programs, products, and services. So it's a great way to, to really get some leads. And if you sell products, you can actually sell product on the spot, but please don't underestimate the power of the follow-up. 
don't just rely on the sales you're going to make during the conference. You have to get people's contact information. What if you sell them something that they love, but you didn't get their contact information? How are you going to follow up to make more sales and repeat sales and referrals? Exactly. You have to think about the follow up, you guys. Yeah. Something I recall from my direct sales days is the fortune is in the follow up. Yeah. So for sure. <laughs> It's so all sign, about yeah, that. sign up and we'll help you. Uh, Melissa and I, we will help you figure out what to do in your display table. We will help you maximize it. I, you know, as a diamond trainer this year in marketing, I want to help you. I want to help you get more business, make more money. And so whatever I can do to be of assistance when you sign up as a vendor, please reach out. Yes. Thank you, Katrina. We appreciate you and we look forward to working with you um, to get to make this a profitable vendor event for all of our vendors. Yay. So, so everybody stay tuned for our live vendor um, training that we'll be hosting uh, in August. Yay. That's going right. to be fun. Yeah. Thank you all so right. much. Thanks. You're welcome. Have a great day.